So now let me move to the third technique which I call the mind liberation and cognitive liberation. Today we are living in the age of cognitive dominance. See earlier when you wanted to dominate another society or another set of human beings, you were going there physically and physically dominating them and that was the period of colonialism. But today what is happening, there is no need to go physically and dominate the people. You can dominate them in terms of the mind. So therefore, mind domination or the cognitive domination is today's, you know, the issue, most important issue. Like for example, the western world is trying to dominate the whole world to the mind domination or cognitive dominance. So you can see the cognitive dominance almost everywhere. In fact, even in a subject area like management, you can see the cognitive dominance very much out there because no alternative theories have been proposed, no new thinking has been done. So the idea here is that you have to liberate your mind from the existing cognitive dominance. So how do you liberate? And not only liberate, but also extend your mind. Mm -hmm. That means spread your ideas. So once you have come out with an alternative idea, so that is the idea of cognitive dominance. I will give example of cognitive dominance. We all know the nursery rhyme. Pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? Mm -hmm. I have been to London to look at the queen. Mm -hmm. So I will change only one word and you will see the inversion. So pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? I have been to London to teach the queen. So its idea is completely inverted. So teach what? Teach yoga, teach meditation, <laughs> teach computers. Okay. So this is how you are able to invert an existing idea and give a new perspective. Second is, I went to Delhi to meet the president. So instead of going to London, you go to Delhi. Okay, so instead of queen, you go to meet your own president. Mm. So there is a shift from the queen to the president. Mm. Okay, so it is liberating the mind from a colonial thinking to a democratic thinking. Mm. And then, of course, this, the students and teachers can fill up, you know, the next line in their own creative ways. And once we have that data, we can an analyze it. Okay, another cognitive dominance idea. At one point in time, the idea of Bimaru states was very popular. Mm -hmm. Bihar, MP, Andhra, Rajasthan, UP, they were all considered Bimaru states. But if you go to these states, they are always full with energy, immaterial of their economic status. So the, this dimension will not come in the phrase Bimaru because Bimaru means negative connotation. Mm -hmm. So somebody deliberately imposed a negative thought on all the people of these states. Mm -hmm. So your mind can get liberated the moment you bring in positive dimension that is Rambo. Mm -hmm. So Rambo means energy. So that is Rajasthan, Andhra, MP, Bihar, Orissa. So it changes your perspective. Mm -hmm. So like this you can continue with lot of ideas and create new perspectives. Then another phrase which we keep on using is the workload. Why work should be considered a load? Mm -hmm. So work is a joy. So if you put in the mind of everybody that work is a yoga or work is karma yoga, then you will not feel the load. You may be working for six hours and you don't even feel your work for six hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how the, you can liberate your mind and create new thoughts, new perspectives. So, like for when you apply the mind liberation model to history, Indian history particularly, then we see which were the periods of creativity in Indian history. So, ancient period Vedika, so that was the period dot of creativity, Vedas, Ramana, Mahavarata, and so Panchatantra, all these things were written during that period. And those ideas are even today influencing 
the whole world in one form or the other. Then came the second period, which we call the Bhakti era. Okay, so <clears throat> that is the saints and sages created a lot of new ideas, new perspective through the you know their uh, duhas and chopais and uh, poetic approach. Then came the freedom movement, created liberation from the colonialism, and then came the IT era or the knowledge era. So when you look at Indian history, which I have given the name, four periods of Indian history, ancient period, Vedika period, second period, Hindika period, because the India became known as Hind, mm. and then third period, Indica period, because the increasingly word India was used during that period, and today it is the India and globally extended India, GE India. Today Indian communities are there everywhere, so many Indias are there almost everywhere in the, uh, on the globe or what I call the India Puras, India Puras are all there. So they all represent the extension of India. So today India is not just this India, physical India, but also a globally extended India. So I call it Vedika, Hindika, Indica and the globally extended India. The moment we present this as a classification of Indian history, then we have created a new perspective. We are out of the Hindu period, Muslim period, British period and independent India period. So that is a very communal or colonial classification. Mm. Here is a new classification and you get a more synthesis and a more plural view of the and more tolerant view of the Indian history. So this is how the mind can get totally liberated. Uh, sir, the things that you are uh, talking about are very interesting, uh, but these things are generally not found in the management books and the literature uh, currently. You know, something similar was told uh, by Buddha long time back and one of his disciples said, Sir, the things you are teaching are, are not to be found in the scriptures. That time the Buddha's reply was that if they are not to be found in scriptures, so put them there. So, my response to your question will be that if these ideas are not in the management books, then we need to put them there mm. and bring it to the knowledge of the anybody who is interested in these ideas and these thoughts. Many of the things that you are uh, explaining right now or in your books and your research papers are those things are they c currently uh, contradict the existing theories, frameworks and models or they may be more of a critique of the existing theories and models. Yeah, Buddha said this something similar, that then the scriptures need amending. So therefore, the management books of today need an amending, amendment by changing them. So the reason is, as Buddha said that time, the scriptures are for human beings and not human beings for scriptures. So management books are for managers and leaders and not the other way around, not the managers and leaders are for the management books. So management books should reflect these radical ideas, creative ideas and the new thoughts. Yes sir, very truly said, maybe all the management teachers we can explore uh, to work on new ideas and uh, wherever needed uh, do the right amendments so that we teach the right thing to our students and do some creative research, original research based on the context and the culture that we live in so to make it more effective and uh, efficient in terms of management theory. Now I will share with you another technique which I call the idea of the Shabda Yoga. Shabda Yoga means the word talks to you word reveals its very deeper meaning and from that deeper meaning you can develop a model, you can develop a new mantra and you can develop some new per new perspectives. So here are some examples from my book Western Windows Eastern Door. The first example is what I call the Veda model of leadership, management and leadership. Now the word Veda is known to everybody but when we look at that word in the English language and analyze each component, each letter of this word, then you get a new perspective, new model. So in Veda, V stands for vision, E stands for enlightenment, D stands for devotion and A stands for action. 
So these are the four things which are required for any great leader. The leader should have a vision, the leader should be an enlightened individual and the leader should be devoted to the cause or to the whatever goal he has set up and the leader should be action oriented, he should demonstrate what is his vision and convert the vision into action. So now you get a very deep understanding of this word Veda and uh, it opens up a new you know, insights into the leadership models. So similarly, this even we can connect, with, connect it with the deeper dimensions of Indian thought, the four ways to self-realization, the vision, the Raj Yuga, enlightenment, the Gyan Yuga, devotion, the Bhakti Yuga, action, the Karma Yuga. Mm. So all the Yugas are hidden in this very word, which is in English language. Mm. So this, is, this insight came to my mind because of the idea of the Shabd Yuga. The word started talking to me and then I got this insight and a new model has been created and this model has already become quite popular in the academic uh, literature, what I call the Veda model of management and leadership. Another example is the MBA model. In this MBA model, M stands for the man, B stands for buddhi and A stands for ahankar. So this is a model of decision making. So decisions are always made in these three ways. Do you make the decision through? Man means take the heart as a primacy, primary idea in the decision making. With the buddhi, which is the rational model of, so use, use the head instead of heart. Mm. And ankar means the ego. Mm. We see many times in the corporate world and also in the political field, the lot of decisions are resulting from more of the ego of a person mm. rather than through the heart and the head. Mm. So we can see the application of this model in our day-to-day -day context and one can do some further empirical research and see what kind of decisions are made using the heart, what kind of decisions are made by the head and in what, what is the role of ego in the decision making mm. process. Our rational model of education or the doors approach is more of the buddhi oriented because that is the rationality model. But the, the, the windows model is the rationality model. The doors model is a more of man oriented, the heart oriented. So, you know, you say heart door. So, open the door of the heart. So, uh, then the third idea of uh, how the word yoga gives us a very deep meaning. The word yoga in my book, I have defined it as yearning for oneness and gaining advancement. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple way of looking at the idea of yoga, which also I call the theory O, theory of oneness. So in yoga, you really seek the oneness, oneness with the self, oneness with nature, oneness with others, oneness with society, and oneness with the ecology, and oneness with God. So this whole idea of yoga gets explained by the word yoga itself. So this is all another example of the Shabda Yoga. Another example of Shabda Yoga is what I call the Osha model of human beings or Osha model of human behavior. Mm -hmm. So the Osha model of human behavior identifies the four levels of human behavior. At the top level is the oneness, the yoga model of oneness. Mm -hmm. The second is the S, the spiritual side of the human being. H is the humanistic side and A is the animalistic or aggressive side of the human being. Mm -hmm. Now all of us display these four types of behavior. So students and teachers can do an exercise that they can observe their own behavior over say two weeks of time and make a classification how many times and in which situations they were displaying an aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. That means they were operating from the A level. Mm -hmm. How many times they were very friendly to the team and others, everybody around them. So that means they were displaying the humanistic behavior. And then how many times they were operating from the spiritual level. That means they were displaying respect, dignity and harmony in their behavior and in their actions. Mm -hmm. And how many times they were operating at the cosmic level or the oneness level. And then that exercise can give us very interesting insight. Mm -hmm. Now this model can be also be applied in terms of the society, in terms of two people. Mm. 
say between you and me. So, we have on one side OSHA, another side OSHA. Mm. So, we create a matrix, then from which cell of the matrix we are normally interacting. Are we interacting from animalistic, animalistic or aggressive, aggressive level mm. or are we operating from humanistic, humanistic or are we operating from spiritual, spiritual. The aggressive level will ultimately create what I call Nagarji. Nagarji is a word which is used in my book which is a combination of negative and energy. So, when the negative energy, the two words are combined, you get a new word which is Nagarji. The, at the HH level, we are friends and you know interacting at that level. So, there is a lot of positive energy. And but the moment we go to SS level, there is a lot of synergy. So, what do we want in society? Do we want a lot of negarji? That means, lot of conflicts and all that or do we want a lot of positive energy or we want to move to the next level which is the spiritual level which is this synergy level. So, the choice is, um, is for left for the individuals. Okay. So, so this is the model which I call the idea of the OSHA model. Uh, sir, that is very interesting and uh, for the participants, uh, we have sir's own uh, one video on this topic in a detailed manner, uh, the link of which is displayed and uh, you can refer to this video. So, finally, what, what I come to is the idea of what we call etc, etc. Now, look at the word etc, again sub yoga application here, hmm. etc et stands for extended transcendental consciousness. Hmm. So, your consciousness, circle of consciousness is expanding. And ultimately, it reaches the level of what I call the 7, 8, 9 level of consciousness. By 7, 8, 9, nine level, I mean the 7th heaven, 8th chakra and the ninth cloud. So, imagine if your mind is operating from that level, then the kind of cre creativity which will be there in you. Yeah. So, that is will be a charismatic creativity. That means, you will display such a deep impact of creativity that probably people around you will start wondering how this person is so creative. So, the secret is that you have used the mastery of Shabda Yoga and thereby expanded your level of consciousness. So, finally, what we need to do is that we need to develop multiple perspectives and this is what I call the Rishi model of creativity. Rishi model stands for, Rishi means R, E and S, W, -E, your ability to see and the re-see in new ways and new perspectives. In corporate context, for example, a person, a corporate leader is able to see and re-see the events, threats and opportunities in many new ways. We have many examples of that uh, in the corporate world. So, people who were able to see and re-see the things in new ways, they g gave a new direction mm -hmm. to the whole industry and uh, even at the level of the nations, they have given a new direction to the nation itself, a new vision to the nation. Mm -hmm. So, this is what we call the idea of multiple perspective or the Sedvada approach to creativity. The Sedvada approach can also be represented, but by an idea which we call the omega circle. Omega circle is a circle of the multiple perspectives like all this the chakra on the Indian flag, there are different spokes. The different spokes represent the different dialectical positions. There are multiple variables and then we need to combine all of them and integrate and synthesize and come out with a new vision. So, this is these are some of the tools and techniques which I have shared with you and which I have been practicing and which are there in my books. And so, the teachers and the students can read some of those books, but here I have given only some illustrative examples and we can create a lot of new ideas. If the students and teachers also start working on these techniques and come out with their own insights and create new knowledge. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, I hope our audience and the participants have uh, found uh, this topic very interesting and they would work on various ideas mentioned in this video. Apart from this, various reading material will be shared uh, that you can also be uh, referred and books uh, which can be referred. Uh, the reference list is also provided in the reading document. And thank you once again, sir, uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, talk. So, uh, the participants can share their feedback, any idea any insight on the email id and they can write to sir at the email id which is mentioned at the end of the video thank you namaskar thank you very much namaskar thank you